ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the automotive access 3q fy24 result earnings conference call hosted by batliwal and karani securities india private limited as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr shailesh raja from batliwal and karani securities india private limited thank you and over to you sir yeah thanks kiran uh, good afternoon and thanks to everyone who has logged into uh, automotive axle 3q and 9 months fa24 nx conference call uh, today we have the senior management team uh, we will be hearing from mr mukumar yen uh, india leader comments merito mr nagaraja Uh, president and whole team director automotive axles limited and mr uh, ranganathan yes uh, cfo automotive axles limited so i i would now like to turn the call to mr uh, mukumar for the opening remarks uh, followed by q and a sir uh, you may begin now um thank you sir uh, good morning uh, ladies and gentlemen um uh, thanks for joining for the automotive axles uh, uh, investor call today we really appreciate your time and looking forward to give an answer to most of your questions um i have with me my colleague nagraj and ranga and uh, ranga will share with you the uh, uh, last quarter uh, the financial year to date financial and then we are here to take the questions from you over to you mr ranga thank you thank you uh... thank you mutu and um, very good morning to you all uh, thanks for taking your time and participating in the third earnings call of automotive axle limited for financial year uh, 23 24 we are glad to present the financial performance for q3 and for the nine months ended december 2023 so um, uh, before we start the financial performance i just want to uh, uh, you know uh, happy to share with all of you like uh, automotive axle um, has been uh, uh, been awarded the tpm excellence award uh, we are going through this journey for the last 2 years and it's our pride to announce that uh, a good recognition for overall um, you know uh, the production systems and the entire interconnectivity and the entire system working around the automotive axle it's a very prestigious one which uh, in the milestone of automotive axle journey I just wanted to share this with uh, all the investors. With this introduction, uh, I just uh, take you to the quarterly performance. The quarterly performance uh, as per, for this quarter is good. We did about 545 crores, and as compared to the previous year, the same quarter was 657 crores. And EBITDA uh, is close to about 622 as compared to 791, uh, close to about 20 to 21 percent dip. uh our over to the volume what we have uh, performed in this quarter i think uh, to that level except for the impact on the fixed cost absorption we are holding up to the performance uh, for the rest of the areas uh pbit is uh, close to 9.6 for this quarter uh, uh, and the same year last quarter is about uh, for q2 last year is about uh, uh, you know uh, 679 and uh, so with this uh, the ytd 9 months uh performance if really uh, uh look at it um, you know we did about uh, uh 1668 crores uh more or the same level as compared to last year we are slightly up by 2% in terms of the nine month performance um if really look at it the ebitda uh, we are at 11.6 uh, um, uh compared to last year we are up by 5% in terms of percentage we did about uh, 11.6% uh, as compared to 11.2 and uh, and pbit is concerned uh, we have uh, got about 9.8% as compared to 9.2 in terms of absolute values we are up by 9% so the volume is totally driven to the market and uh, so uh, probably you know uh, we not show in a significant growth in the top line nevertheless uh, we are trying to see a, a cut over the last year we too to wanted to show some uh, you know overall top line growth but nevertheless uh, if you really look at it our efforts the continuous efforts all these years we are do, uh, doing through a mission 25 uh, 
our EBITDA is improved and protected, and uh, we are continuing to focus on, on all the cost, uh, uh, cost reduction, cost control, and uh, uh, profit improvement programs. And definitely, uh, our marketing uh, under leadership of Motu is working with, uh, the, uh, uh, with all the customers to ensure and improve the, uh, you know, our business share with each customer and try to maximize the revenue for the organization. So with this introduction, um, and uh, I'll probably uh, open the floor for the questions, if any. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Radha. Please go ahead. Yes, sir, Harry. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, uh, my first question is on the industry perspective. So, we have seen that the trend in developed countries like North America is that uh, uh, the CD players, they outsource 100% of the actual manufacturing to independent manufacturers like us. So, we believe that in India also gradually the industry will move towards this global trend. So, how has that uh, panned out in the last uh, two to three years? So, for example, VCV recently has announced its foray into small commercial vehicle segment. So, whether uh, more CV players are going for independent uh, axle manufacturers and uh, uh, how is the state of the industry as of now? Um, thank you, Radha, for asking that question. Um, you are right. I think the globally the trend of OEMs are with the electrification or new power vehicles are coming, whether it's hydrogen, hydrogen fuel cell. Most of them want to um, drop their development initiatives on the conventional axle and try to give it to an axle player. This is what the global trend is starting, but not uh, in India still. Uh, the main reason for that is, uh, see, you know, uh, in the 2000 year, 2018-19, most of the Indian OEMs, which has actual manufacturing by themselves, has created a huge capacity and Indian market has not crossed the 2018 volume in terms of the number of vehicles. Of course, in the tonnage, we have crossed it. So the situation has not come and, uh, you know, the global uh, uh, survey, I think, uh, about the how the adoption of electrification or the new power fuels in India, it talks about the segment where we are playing, automotive action, like 7 point and above on medium and heavy commercial. They talk about 10 to 15 percent by 2032. This is what the latest survey says, the electrification. So I'm sure that the trend will come, but whether uh, it's not the question of whether it will come. It will be when it will come. Maybe for 25, 26 OEMs will start making it if the market is going to cross 500,000 vehicles which we believe that it will happen by 2028 in commercial vehicle market. And at that point of time, when there's no capacity, they will outsource this access to outside and also start investing on, um, depending on the technology at that point of time, on electrification or um, uh, fuel cells or something. So this is a situation is a little fluid, but the government is doing a lot of support in terms of the bus for the electrification. And you know, um, our presence in bus is very less, but unfortunately, the bus taxes are being sold, the electrification of bus taxes are sold at a very high subsidy. So, it, it, it's a question of the, the technology breakthrough has to come to make the cost almost uh, neutral with the current technology. I think that is where the market is going to pick up, and that is where it will cross the 15% threshold by 2032. Um, it will it'll come, but it's a question of when it will come. We believe that it not, it's not going to come before 26, 27. Hope that answers your question. Yes, sir. So what gives you confidence that the OEs will not expand the capacities uh, any further and uh, will resort to uh, giving the uh, contracts to independent manufacturers like us? Um, I can't say that I think uh, that has to be answered by OEM. We can't answer for the OEM strategy, but we believe that being an actual expert, 
no nope, we'll do further investments on this because their focus will be on the new generation vehicle uh, you touched up on the point on um, vcv announcing their small commercial vehicle for information we are not present in that segment yes sir thank you the second thing uh, so from a tennis perspective uh, the industry has crossed fy19 peak level uh so going forward if at all there is a uh, slowdown or a down cycle uh, in the cv industry we seem to be a better place to this time given that we have announced our uh, entry into the 7.5 to 16 ton segment and already we have customers as well in this segment and other than that we also have defense customers so wanted to know what percentage of revenue is coming from this segment and how has the mix changed as compared to the previous peak of fy19 in any other plans uh, that can help us mitigate through this cycle the commercial vehicle market uh, ups and downs will come and you have seen in the last three cycles every time when the market goes down we are always ahead of market in terms of this whatever the new generation axle that have been launched after 2019 Your company is present in full. Um, B is a 55 ton with the largest big crown wheel in the entire vehicle. The big car is 185. Or we are going in for a tipper with a higher tonnage and higher ring gear size. All these new product developments have been done. But of course, I don't want to uh, comment anything on to the segmentation, share what we have and all because it's highly complex. But the one thing that I can tell you is the market is moving towards more of a tractor trailer. Uh, from the rigid truck where we are present and of course 15 to 19 ton vehicle whatever you said is also we are present uh, uh, in both the customers but uh, uh, other than that i don't uh, it's extremely challenging for us to split that into segment wise sales or the sales between different companies ranga if you want to add please add that no uh, good uh, so. thank you so um, in previous con calls uh, in our conversations uh, you had mentioned that uh, uh, after market margins are better for our company but what i understand is the kind of products that we have the product range is designed to sustain the entire life cycle of the vehicle so um, could you please explain what are the products uh, that we are talking about that we sell in the after market and where the margins are better See, this is a, a bigger challenge. There is a general uh, perception that aftermarket are uh, better profitable. Um, no doubt, aftermarket are better profitable. But you also have a lot of uh, additional cost in terms of reaching to the customers, your channel partners, and all. Having said that, uh, one side we are improving. One side we are improving our product reliability uh, to meet the OEM demand. Most of the customers who buy vehicle from OEM. and do you know the trend in the commercial vehicle market today is 6 years and 6 lakh kilometers and people are talking about a million cycles uh, in the days to come with an advent of technology with an advent of uh, data analysis that's available digitalization every company is looking at how to enhance the product and at the same time we wanted to uh, penetrate more into after market this is a, a typical uh, uh, once the product reliability is up and up your after market sales is going to be there so we are trying to look into an innovative way so what are the other things that we can sell we are even uh, talking about remanufacturing of some of the axles to make sure that the the total cost of ownership for the end fleet operators comes down so it will always be a, a chicken or egg situation in this but uh, nevertheless i would uh, say that we will always stay focused on to the customer and whatever brings value to the customer um, of course and also all the stakeholders we will do the right thing which is good for the uh, market which is good for the country Yes, sir. Um, any new customer additions uh, in this quarter or last two quarters in defense of highway, LCD, LCD buses exports, and uh, has the exports mix increased from 15 percent in this quarter? Um, I would say I would answer on the uh, um, customer. See, you know, CBI is playing four. There are four major players uh, or five major players in commercial vehicles. and we can have a product addition but definitely not a customer addition in the quarter or something in terms of this i think that's what is happening 
uh, to this. In terms of exports, as you all know, that we are exporting only to the uh, meritor, uh, meritor and not directly to any of the customers because we are making actions and actions cost components and subsystems to the global meritor. So we are adding the product, nevertheless, and we have our exports has grown. Uh, even though we don't see directly the number, I think Ranga, it is about 1.8x Ranga. Yes, yes, Mutu. It's about 1.8x of uh, previous year. So exports is growing. That is why, even though the market, domestic market, is dropped, uh, our domestic market has rise flat and come down. At least we are able to little better in terms of performance. Um, but not, I would, I won't be able to say that there is any specific addition of customers onto this. Here, exports, we also had Volvo as a customer. It's the only customer, not uh, Volvo. Now it has become UD Trucks of Visa to Thailand, where we are supplying to them. Our agreement, uh, we had earlier an agreement complete closure by 2024. Now it is extended up to 2027. We are supplying axles and brakes to them. See, we are supplying to the customer where Meritor is not directly competing. Okay. And this is to the Thailand facility where we are supplying. Thank you, and the rest of the region where the meritor is present, they are supplying to them. Okay. So lastly, um, so we have mentioned that our aim is to become number one player in break as compared to number two player right now. So how do we see the change in product, product mix panning out uh, due to this? And... Uh, does break have a lower margins as compared to actions and, and um, how will the overall margin change if the change happens in the product mix? Okay, there are two things. Aspiration of growth, uh, meeting the number one. Yes, we are on the target. We are moving in. As you know, breaks has a lesser margin. It is definitely going to have an impact, but at some point in time, it's not a question of margin, but it's uh, your aspiration will be in terms of top line. And we continue to keep growing. We continue to increase uh, penetration of brakes with the, both the largest giants, and we are on target moving towards that. Whether if you see whether it will have an impact on the overall profitability, because we are adding up the existing volume, and uh, definitely with the um, uh, with the absorption of fixed cost, I don't think we'll be able to di we'll be diluting the existing margin just because of increasing the brake share. Okay, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sridhar Kalani from Access Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, one question from our side uh, means. Uh, one of the rating agency it is projecting that the commercial vehicles industry will uh, decline by 4 to 7 percent in FY25. And in the last call, we said that uh, we expect a single digit growth in FY25. So, what is your general view on uh, CV industry per se? What kind of growth you expect in FY25 or on degrowth? Any color on that? The market has been predicting that in FY25, the market will grow down by about 8 to 10 percent is what has been prediction, what has been said even in FI23, um, basically because the U.S. market, North American market has started coming down, or they were predicting that the market will come down, and you know the uh, Euro market has already come down by about 10%. But we believe with a very, very strong um, uh, uh, factors in India in terms of, uh, whether it is in terms of inflation or it is in terms of infrastructure spend, or in terms of the government policies, uh, in terms of infrastructure. When I say we, this is based on the feedback from the various OEMs. If not uh, growth, I think the market will be flat for next year. I think this is what we have all been predicting. Last year, when the same, I think three, four quarters before, when most of you asked that this year itself it is going to drop, we said flat or um, up to seven, eight percent, single digit. But now it looks like the market is flat. In fact, last quarter there was an apprehension that the market will go down. Yes, it did go down in December. There is a problem concern, right? But of course, we believe that the full year will be market will be flat. And next year also, we believe that the market will be flat before it takes on to the higher thing. But please, uh, uh, I wanted to bring it to your notice. When we are talking about flat, 
it is only in terms of the number of vehicle in terms of tonnage most of the oems are doing higher tonnage so higher value added product is what is going on the availability of tonnage vehicle we are already growing and so sir so uh, if we if we take care of tonnage then from a bit a margin perspective is it safe to assume that we will be able to maintain our margins and any color on commodity outlook going forward for next quarter the sustaining margin if the if the volumes remain flat yes i think we will have a challenges but uh, the continuous improvement the plant team or the operation team is doing is extremely helping us to sustain our profitability of course we are not meeting your um, ambitious growth target in terms of uh, um, that's the first question and second thing we asked the question from the commodity after about 3 or 4 uh, quarters when the commodities have started coming down we see from um, this december the steel prices are set to go up okay it's already the first settlement of steel prices going up has been uh, settled um but nevertheless i wanted to bring it to your notice like earlier what we brought in the commodity up and down is basically an adjustment that we do it's a back to back and uh, your company will not have a major impact due to commodity increase or decrease okay clear thanks a lot sir thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of chetan druva please go ahead yeah, thank you for the opportunity uh, i had one question sir is regarding the results of this quarter there has been a why why decline so i am sorry i missed your initial uh, part of the address so i just wanted to know why there was a decline if the market was flat and you were uh, was it there a temporary lull or some phenomena which not visible to us yeah if you if you see the first two quarters uh, we were on target with the market last quarter if you see the volumes is flat but the inventory corrections has happened with all the oem in terms of the sales so the actual production last quarter has been less i think that's the reason for our drop it's a momentum it will it will pick up this quarter because the inventory has to be in the pipeline back people thought that the market will drop and uh, you know most of the oems have dropped their production and inventory was brought down i think that's the reason uh, so so is it already picking up in uh, yeah yeah you see last uh, month of january we did uh, uh, better so uh, oems are still the sales see i think one thing that we the oems did good is they have controlled their inventory they brought down their uh, pipeline stocks and made the sales as a flat Though the production has dropped, so the inventories have come down. It's only short term. If you see the drop, I think Ranga was telling that we are almost flat between last year and this year. So it's only an inventory adjustment and not much. I think this quarter we are already picking up, right, Ranga? Yes. Uh, overall, for the nine months, um, you know, subject to the commodity, we are about actually about two percent up on the revenue. Um, yeah, I think that's the number. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks for the clarification. so there's no system but let me tell you the market is changing the market is changing a lot suddenly the bus is picking up a lot um, because of the government subsidy and everybody is under pressure to sell it before uh, this quarter and uh, so those are the small small segmental changes which will have an impact here and there but by and large overall we don't feel with a very very strong product background with a very strong operational uh, performance in terms of uh, delivery and quality we continue to grow our aspirations you all know growing doubling the market growth so overall for the year uh, do we see us uh, doing around uh, high single digits in terms of revenue growth uh, sorry sir overall for the year do you see the company doing uh, at least high single digits in terms of growth right maybe for this year it all depends on uh, the february how the oems are going to do if they are going to put the inventory onto the zero completely zero then it may be uh, almost flat right ranga it, it looks like it's a flat absolutely. at the point of time absolutely absolutely no uh, the, uh, uh, the market is operating at much much lower than the capacity available so people will be able to flexibly play if you are running at the brim then people will not take a chance today even by dropping production in december by 40% companies are able to increase the production in january because we have a huge capacity that's available you know what's happening in tractor industry and enough capacity is available in the casting foundry forging the supply chain is not at risk so uh, people will very very cost conscious and people will keep uh, conserve the cash even we are doing that conserving the cash at this point of time and restricting our expenses 
and making sure that we are prepared even in the case of anything worst happened so with that situation everybody is playing very very cautious and that is going to have an impact a little bit here and there oh i see so so this is there's a lot of the clear post may june when the elections are over i think the full fledged budget is going to come and uh, what is going to be the top for uh, improving it all these things when it comes it will definitely help just to add one more point what muthu said you know uh, last if you see last year 22 23 um after the covid year the major recovery uh, 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 recovery year as far as the mhv is concerned we really see the q3 uh, and uh, it uh, substantially improved compared to the previous year by 75% in the last year revenue is concerned compared to the previous year 21 22 so uh, but uh, when, when you are saying that we are compared to the last quarter the market is holding up to the same level and as muthu rightly said that we have to wait and watch uh how the oems are going to uh, you know uh, look at the market and manage inventory in the in february and march based on which overall we may be at flat or maybe marginal uh, uh, reduction can be there depends on how the february march is concerned at this moment of time we are anticipating at a flat uh, revenue for the whole financial year as compared to the previous one okay, okay. Thank, thank you very much sir thank you very much and good luck for this quarter thank you A reminder to all the participants: You may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Shailesh Raja from Batliwala and Karani Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. So on the off-highway segment front, uh, we have limited opportunities in the domestic market as to as OEs are captively producing axles for the existing model. So any talks with the domestic customers for their newer models, and also with the overseas customer. to have reasonable scale in this particular product sir the um off by way as you rightly said most of the oems which are making vehicles they have integrated and they are manufacturing by themselves be it jcb who holds majority of the indian market in off by way business we'll be talking to them about some supplies of components and all i mean it depends on the overall um, the value addition what we are going to do and you end up on the aspirations of our top line and bottom line where we are going to go this offer your market is little tricky in terms of saying that the product that's available in india is completely um, different from what is there in the global the same vehicle is not there so any axles or uh, component that you develop for india market you can't uh, export it back because you know like jdb the vehicle backo is very really prominent in india it's not across any other country so we need to have a huge product development if you want to go for any um, global and then do this uh, and uh, you need a huge investment to in terms of uh, creating a capacity we are working on a strategy of this uh, on whether uh, we should invest at what point of time on this and please note that india is becoming a favorable destination for global and even global merita is looking at what what we can do more in india So all these discussions are on, but uh, maybe at this point of time, I'm not able to give you more information on this. But your company is working on to see that how we can penetrate into the segment. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to remind you: it needs the huge investment, um, investment in terms of capex and also in terms of the engineering time on product development because you need a huge pipeline of product development to be done. Okay, sir, so, uh, with Tata Motors. Can you please update us the current share of business? I understand you don't share this number. Can you give some index number, say two years back, uh, say it was hundred, and how much it is now, and how do you see share of business going up in next two three years? You know, for uh, we don't supply anything to Tata Motors in terms of axles at this point of time, other than some different axles and some unique bus axles, front axles for low load bus, which doesn't come as a part of the uh, share because it's a front axle. But in terms of brakes, I can tell you that we have grown up by 40% when compared to what was the base index a year before. But what we were in 2021, 2020, 2021, now we are about 40% up in brakes. I think that's what I can tell you. Tata has a huge capacity in setup, and uh, after comments has uh, taken over Meritor, we have been working very closely with Tata to find it out. But uh, you know the um, the equation when somebody has a capacity and then run, not running it into the full. This is uh, this is the management tricky situations, but we are working them to find out how to provide a solution 
which will make a win-win relationship between them. So your company continues to work with uh, Tata to see that how we can penetrate or how we can add, provide a value-added solution for them. Okay. So, this is back three years time. Shailesh, your voice was breaking. Shailesh, sir. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, similarly, can you give us index number for the exports also, sir? Two years back and how much it is now and what kind of growth uh, you are seeing in export for next two, three years. And also, normal customer mix, how that mix will change. Ranga, can you provide that index on export? I remember 1.8, but you can give the exact number uh, in terms of. Yeah, it will be roughly around, uh, if the last uh, three years before, uh, now the index close to about uh, 1.5x minimum, I'll say that. Um, as Muthu was indicating that, you know, um, um, year on year we are uh, we are seeing a growth at this moment of time between 10 to 12 percent. And But nevertheless, uh, we are working on the long-term strategies with the military global. Definitely, that's going to be a priority and a focused area, and definitely uh, we will try to maximize and try to do the best in the exports. That's what our plan at this moment. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Radha. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks again. Um, so I wanted to understand that uh, in the previous peak CV industry cycle, we had done a 150 crore capex and expanded both axles and brake capacity. So also around that time, we had introduced new products in the suspension. So any plans to introduce new products in this peak cycle and uh, maybe anything in, in terms of uh, new products that we can add? See, in terms of 2018, we did about like 130, 140 crore capacity, and that is what has made us to grow from. If you see our revenue in uh, 2018 at that point of time, and now we have grown more than about 30, 40 percent, uh, even when the market is about 20 percent less. I think uh, that is a uh, effect of that what we have done. Also, we have spent huge money at that point of time in terms of product development. And I wanted to be very, very happy to share with you that today, whatever the products that are running today, more than 60% of that are the new launches that we have done, which has substantially increased the reliability of the product, like what we are talking about, doubling our warranties and all. So whatever the investment that we have done is really helped us in terms of penetrating into the market. That is why we have grown better than the market growth. Uh, if you ask us today whether do we have a capacity, yes, last time we answered to you that we are still not running at 100%. We have capacity available. We can expand the business. But if you say whether with the same capacity, whether you can produce off highway and those products, those are the specialized products, needs the specialized equipment. Uh, hope I answered your question. Yes. Randa can provide you what is the current utilization of the plant. Yep, we are actually at, uh, you know, um, at, the, uh, at the last quarter, if you look at it, we are around 70% level. Okay, sir. So lastly, so you mentioned that, uh, you know, with the breaks, uh, product mix changing, we'll also have, uh, you know, uh, reduction in fixed costs, etc. So in FI23, we had achieved all-time low break-even point of fixed cost was just, uh, ten percent of sales. So we uh, we had also mentioned in our last PPT that we are focusing on uh, reducing conversion and material cost. So in terms of that, um, so how much more headroom is there in to reduce cost, and how can we achieve that? Uh, there's no limit for uh, continuing the. I think our approach is about half cost approach, which we are operating. I think if you can see where we were at 2018 and now. I'm sure that you are the best better analyst. You can put it together how we have progressed. Even though after five years, after COVID, with challenging environment, every company is talking about fixed costs, 
what are the challenges on to that and of course on conversion we continue to progress on that so you will be able to see um how we are progress so we continue to keep progressing if you ask me what is your target are you going to uh, move into the next level it difficult for me to set a target on saying that we are going to further bring it down like this but one thing that i can show you is the continuous improvement and we continue to keep optimizing our fixed costs and uh, variable costs i think uh, ranga you can tell between 2018 and now how we have progressed in terms of both you uh, see yeah yeah see you really see uh, um um there are uh, two three things we need to see uh, together you know when you look at the pnl one is about the, uh, the lot of commodity um which has uh, come into the system if we take a benchmark of 18 19 and now uh, and our internal assessment uh, definitely if we remove the commodity uh, uh, the impact on as a percentage per se you know and uh, that is very uh, significant improvement we have made in terms of uh, uh, both in terms of conversion cost as well as in terms of the metal cost optimization metal mass cost optimization is one of your primary goal of uh, 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 cost control or cost sustenance strategy what we are holding it uh, commodity is given we can't do anything about it as muthu said whatever be the commodity uh, in the market that get uh, reimbursed by the customers uh so uh, if you are able to maintain overall basis without having impact that's a great achievement there but uh, suppose we have uh, our own assessment we remove that uh, commodity we are very significantly improved our uh, that is our, uh, our operating performance uh, both from metal cost and conversion cost perspective and um, at least uh, at least to put 2 to 2 or 2.5% growth will definitely will be seen it's ever a rough cut time saying that so 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 much effort has been gone in year on year because uh um, our focus will continue to be in uh, in the cost optimization uh, uh, strategies in going forward uh, it's not that you know uh, yeah maybe some areas we may be stagnant but most often is more dynamic as a new product comes in and uh, and uh, and also the market dynamics changes product modification happens we are always find opportunities to improve our cost uh, uh, and the cost in the special middle cost and we'll continue to work on it and uh, and a quite uh, a quite significant piece of um uh, this metal cost uh, uh, you know benefit year on year uh, improvisation of the cost is being uh, uh, being uh, achieved uh, that's the reason uh, uh, the commodities are in spite of the low volumes we are upholding ba- borrowing the mix uh, the product mix uh, we are upholding the product margin if you see that's how we are able to maintain the consistency Yes, thank you. All the best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing remarks. Over to you, sir. Um, thank you, Shailesh. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the confidence that uh, put on our organization. as committed uh, we are i'm not saying that we are passing through challenging time but medium and heavy commercial vehicles unlike um, uh, two wheeler and passenger car is going through rough patches and we will ensure that we continue to keep grow and bring value to our all the stakeholders of this once again thank you very much for uh, taking time to join with the call and ask your questions your questions with makes us to uh, uh, shape us and then keep uh, progressing thank you very much Ranga, you want to add anything, Ranga? No. Um, as Mutu said, uh, we we will we'll, our growth will go in line with the market, and uh, our our focus on cost optimization and operational excellence is continuously on. Definitely, we try to grow our uh, um, our market in terms of the business share with the customers, as well as in the aftermarket and export business. That's a long term objective. We'll keep doing that, uh, but definitely, we'll try to do our best to align with the market. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great time. On behalf of Batliwala and Karani Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.